thought I heard something else. Songs like that make you remember. I thought I heard a whistle like Dad just whistles in the call. How could you hear that? There. Funny how it sounds, Dave. I remember the day the United States first in the Dad's photograph, Frederick Wilson, arriving Washington at 7 p.m. If you don't know how to use me, I'll show you how. He showed them how to save time to similar machine guns. I couldn't tell where his scientific management ended and his family life began. Even buttoning his vest from bottom to top will save four seconds. But he can walk into those icebergs in Germany, or the Pierce Arrow plant in this country, and announce he speed up production by one fourth, and then do it. What works in the factory will work at home. I guess with so many of us, it was scientific management or bedroom. And even with a dozen, I don't think Dad was ever satisfied. <coughs> I remember him looking us over once and saying, Only twelve, Lily, but never mind, you did the best you could. Remember when Mother came home from that trip and asked if everything had run smoothly? Dad said, Oh, we have some look at one over there, but a good spanking bottom in the line. And she had to say, That's not one of ours, dear. He belongs next door. I remember. Frank, that music. We used to sing that song. Before our army. All of us rolling along in the Pierce Arrow singing Love's Old Sweet Song. I remember, Dad would lean back against his seat and cock his hat on the side of his head. And Mother would snuggle up real close as if she were cold. And I remember once, she turned around between songs and said, Right now is the happiest time in the world. Maybe it was. And maybe that's the time, in a family, when you're all together, before anything's happened to any one of you. Right now is the happiest time in the world. Remember when she said it again? <coughs> Dad with his bad heart, leaving to lecture at the World Management Conference in Europe. He whistled the Sindley call when he was about to leave, and we all came running. He was trying to hug us all, and that's when Mother said it. When I think of Dad, I don't think of that. I think of color chalking our fingers in a typewriter piece, or even the baby playing the bell system, and taking videos of us washing dishes so he can analyze them and eliminate waste motions. And painting diagrams on the wall to show us the solar system, or the difference between meters and yards. Tapping out messages in Morse code, telling those who understood where Kennedy was in. And how he hated distractions. Remember how he used to shout those two noisy canaries? The one he named Shut Up and the other You Heard Me. <coughs> the way I remember down with Dad Best, he'd come bounding up the front steps, arms full, busting to try some new idea. He'd come roaring <coughs> to the living room, pull out a stopwatch, and whistle assembly call. That man could come running. <coughs> Language lessons. 
French answer. No, 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 you don't have to listen consciously. Just play them in the morning, and soon they'll make an effect. Not every morning in the bathroom. I spent $160 on this equipment. You're not even unwrapped, this. Maybe you can get your money back. Yeah. I don't want my money back. And if those Victrolas aren't playing from the minute you get up till you come down for breakfast, I'll know the reason why. One reason. It's impossible to change records when you're in the bathtub. You can be in and out of the tub in the time it takes a record to play. That's why you're taught motion study. You never taught us anything about taking a bath. I will now demonstrate how to take a bath without waste motions, without dabbing here and then there and taking an hour. Danielle and Frank, bring that rug over here. We'll pretend it's the bathtub. You mean right now? I mean at once. Put it over there. Now in the bath. Yes, Dad. Jackie, a little more hot water. Whoa, 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 whoa! Calm down. A little left, a little left. Perfect. I will now demonstrate how to take a bath without waste motions. I have a cake of soap in my right hand. Follow this one simple continuous motion from the top of the shoulder down the top of the left arm, back up the bottom of the arm, and down the side. Got it? Shift soap. <coughs> Same motion. Other side. Don't forget the back of your head. Oh. Hello, boss. I'm not forgetting a thing. I'm glad you're home, Marty. What's all the rackets? Fingernail inspection. How about yours? Fighting them again? <coughs> I told you not to wash the dishes yourself. But there's already too much work for the cooking. I'll take care of that. It's simple. <coughs> this is it is all the same thing. Continuing. Give a little attention to the back of your neck, and you'll be in and out of the tub before you can say, Bonjour. Now that you know all about taking a bath, put the rug back and take the big trolls upstairs. Now, boss, I'll go talk to you. We'll both talk to you. Wait, which goes to the bathroom? We'll give the girls the French. The French for first thing. Yeah, both. Is it both French or German? I think it's Spanish. Both seconds. I have a wonderful new idea. We're going to try out a 
wonderful new project. What kind of project? We're going to set up a family council. Your mother's not going to run this household, and neither am I. Then who is? You. They all Me. All of you, through a democratic family council. We'll have a family democracy. You'll be deciding how things go around here, and you'll be answering the questions that may come up. Gosh, Dad, we will? You bet we will. You know how I get factories to set up joint employer and employee boards to make assignments on the basis of personal aptitudes? Yes, but what kind of assignments? All sorts of assignments. This, that, even work assignments. Oh. Now, now, this is a great step forward. You'll see. The Gilgoth Family Council is going to session right now. Arrange yourselves. Frank, get a chair for your mother. We'll get right to the business before us. Just like a factory. And now we're going to in order. That means quiet. You see that I'm installed here as your chairman. I assume there are no objections. Hearing none? Mr. Chairman. Out of order. Since this is going to be a democratic council, I believe the chairman should represent the common people. You are very much out of order. The chair has the floor. But you said you have no objections and I want to object. Out of order means out of order and sit down. Now the first order of business is to apportion the necessary work assignments. <laughs> so how do you guys want to divide the work? Come, come fellow members. How do you want to divide the work about the house? I don't think anyone wants to divide the work or otherwise be associated with it in any way, shape, or form. This is a democracy, so everybody speaks. So, Danielle, I recognize you. I'm warning you, start speaking. I think that Mrs. Fitzgerald and Tom should do the work. They do get paid for it. Sit down. Bill, I recognize you. I think Tom and Mrs. Fitzgerald have enough to do. We should hire help for work. Sit down. <coughs> oh, now, boss. Of course we could hire more help, but that means we'd have to save other places. If we cut out all allowances and moving takes hey, away. Wait, 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 wait. Do I hear a motion to that effect? Who wants to stop allowances? Moving pictures? Seriously, we'll all have to help. I move the boys cut the grass and rake the leaves. And I move the girls cook, sew, and do supper dishes. And everyone makes his own bed. Except the chairman. Except the chairman. <coughs> Second the motion. All those in favor? Motion carried. Now, if there's no point, Mr. Chairman, I believe the purchase of a new rug is intended. Yes, it is. Can the budget afford such a rug? I don't know, boss. Seems like they have a good point. I plan to spend hundred dollars. Well, I move we spent ninety-five. Second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Looks like news on that one, boss. Now, if there's no further business, Mr. Chairman, I move we spend the five dollars we just saved on that rug to buy a new puppy. Whoa! Yeah. Wait a minute. <laughs> the dog would be a pet. Everyone could pat him and. I would be a master. A dog would sleep at the foot of my bed and I would wash him when he was dirty. A dog would be an accursed nuisance. He would be our master. Nobody would wash his filthy flea bitten carcass. He would most definitely sleep on the foot of my bed. Let's vote. Any pet that doesn't lay eggs is an extravagance. Oh, no, 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 I suppose next you want ponies, roadsters, trips to Hawaii, silk stockings. Uh, Mr. Chairman? What is it? There is still further business I wish to place before the council, and it's really important. I'm not hiding a thing, and I want the whole family to see. Would you like me to bring down the babies? Dad, be serious. What is it? Well, to begin with, these, these under things, these teddies, I'm going to wear them. No, you're not. <coughs> you will take these back to the store right now. I bought them with my own money. But there's one, only one other girl besides us who doesn't wear teddies at school. And if you don't believe it, you can come to school and see for yourself. That won't be necessary. Well, at least there's one other sensible girl in school besides you. Yeah, but she doesn't even wear a teddy. <laughs> And if you still don't believe it, that still won't be necessary. And you might as well know it isn't just teddies I have. I also bought silk stockings. No! And you did not. You can see right through these. You might as well go bare legged. <laughs> They're like the last of the seven veils. Now you know. Do you know what will happen if you go around wearing silk stockings? Never mind, dear. But this is the way everybody dresses today. 
Boys don't notice you when you when uh, you don't dress like other girls. Don't tell me about boys. I know all about boys. You don't want us to be wallflowers, do you? I'd rather raise wallflowers than clinging vines. I'm going to wear these. I am not to be a wallflower anymore. And I'm going to buy silk stockings too. And me. I will not let you out of the house with them. Don't you see that? I've never even been asked if the drug is sold for plain, ordinary vanilla soda. If it's sodas that you want. Oh, Dad. As for boys, they don't get serious about girls who wear silk stockings. They just run around with them. Well, if you ask me, it's a dead giveaway to be so suspicious. It denotes a misspent youth. No, yes. Look, Anne, when a man picks a wife, he wants someone you respect. <laughs> oh, I'm respected, all right. I'm the most respected girl in the whole school. The boys respect me so much, they hardly look at me. Anne, come back down here. Look at all the fun we have here at home with our projects. You don't understand. You don't understand at all. I wish your job was not like shoes if you only had one or two children. Neither of them is me. I guess we better start working on the yard. Come on, guys. Let's give a hand in the kitchen. Okay. Good girl. I'll straighten the living room. Boss, what is it I don't understand? I school girl. Remember when we decided to have so many children? Remember what I suggested? You suggested that we have all boys. Now, I'm not saying it's your fault, but you should have listened. High school girls. <laughs> Alright, Chingo, there's only one way to fix this. Just like in a factory. <coughs> Here. What, Frank? Why doesn't Dad want you wearing silk stockings and having gates? I don't know why. You have a reason, right? Yeah, he would. But what could the reason be? I don't know. Do you remember the time, I think it was two weeks after Danielle first said we should buy the $5 dog? After Anne first showed Dad those silk stockings. I remember the battle over those stockings. But a little while after that, Dad and Doc Burke were upstairs and talking, and then they came down together, and Dad was joking. They seemed so casual at the time. I mean, we didn't even have a suspicion. That's the time. Gosh, Frank, when a man with a dozen children gets told his heart's on the blink, what's he going to do? That's what I'm getting at. Maybe that's why... Maybe that's the reason he didn't want you spending so much time with boys and having sodas all the time. I guess it wouldn't contribute to skipping grades at school. Don't you see? The farther we are along, the easier it'd be for us. Of course. It'd be less of a load on Mother. We'd be able to take care of ourselves better. And I guess that's why Dad didn't want us going to the drugstore to get sodas with boys and things like that, but we didn't know. And he didn't know either, like Mom said. High school girls. Yeah, I guess boys and things. Dad must have thought it was a shocking waste of time. The way I remember it, the... First boy to call happened to be on the same night Dad and Dr. Burton had the long conference upstairs. Yeah, I, I remember they went upstairs after dinner that night. Yeah, you and I had just finished playing chess. And I was sitting there wishing that the phone would ring and that it would be some football player who was dying to talk to me. And I didn't even notice when Dad and the doctor came downstairs after that. But the way they were talking, you should have noticed, right? Something should have made you suspect. I should have, but the, the conversation just seemed so casual at the time. children of average parents. 
That's the topic of tonight's discussion. <coughs> Silk stockings? I've been wearing them to school and you might as well know it. I suppose next you'll be wanting to paint yourself. Everybody wears makeup nowadays. They don't call it painting anymore. I don't care what they call it. I won't have any painted women in my house. What you want is a house full of old maids. What I want is for you to get ahead in life with stuff that's important without me having to hound you all the time. The topic for tonight's family council is skipping grades at school. You bet it is. And better organization, too. I thought we voted that all topics should be of general interest. Better organization is always of general interest. <coughs> Dad's so smart. Why can't he understand? Oh, you poor thing. Your move. Okay. You sure about that? Of course. Hey, wait a minute. Another game? No. Get him out of here! <laughs> Up on Dad's bed again. He's always on Dad's bed. He's crazy about Dad. Yeah. Across the coal bin, basement window, up the back stairs, Ted's bed. And since he was right about the dog, now I don't think he's right about everything. The clothes, makeup, and everything. Hey, Phil. The girls are thinking about school matter in school. Over these three? Yeah. Uh, what's so ridiculous about that? <coughs> Nothing. Only. Only what? If you've anything to say. I just wouldn't think you'd have that kind of effect on anybody. And we've known you all life. I guess if it was a boy who didn't know you so well, that would be different. Uh, thanks for the compliment. Hey, I, I think you're really good swimmers and at tennis. We don't care for your opinion. Other boys don't feel that way about us, do they? I've never heard the subject mentioned. Well, you want an honest, frank answer. We, we don't. don't. What good do they do? One day you're going to be surprised. One day that phone over there is going to ring and it'll be someone. That is probably somebody from Dad. Hello? You want to talk to who? Are you absolutely sure you haven't got to mix up with somebody else? Who's it for? You don't mean Ann Gilbert, the one with the freckles. Oh my goodness, you're still there? Please don't hang up. Thank you. Please don't hang up. What are you saying? Imagine, Ann, a voice calling for you. Better hurry before he hangs up. Give me that phone! Oh! Snake in the grass! Hello? Yes, this is Ann Gilbert. It's, it's nice of you to call. Ann, talk to him. Go on, say something. I can't. I'll handle them. I'll fracture your skull. <laughs> oh, my God.
Friday night over. I don't think tonight's a very good night for it, but maybe some other time. But if I break the first day to enter, have there won't be any other night. Please, Mother, say something to Dad. I wish some other time. But when? When? I suppose you'll start somewhere, though. I already told him yes. Maybe we can bring him up to the end of the council, if he'll be especially cooperative. I hope this boy is the nice and reassuring type. Oh, he is. He's real small, too. He's only that high. <laughs> <laughs> See who's going to get the fried shrimp. Get her, Bill. Let's get another time. I highly doubt it.
and it hits the apple. <laughs> and the little William tells you, pull, pull the bow. And it's very nice. Hits the apple. <laughs> anyway, uh, we're getting kind of late, so we better uh, shut off. I think my father would like to meet you first. I think maybe he will. Well, Already done, man. We really gotta get going. You got time to show us how you lead a cheer? Yeah! No, let's let's go. I'll show you one cheer. And then we'll get going. No, that's okay. We'll just carry one out. No, no, guys, no. Y'all ready? Yeah, we're ready. Okay. Here we go. Holler now. I need a who? No. I need a rock. I need a rain. <laughs> and a tiger from Montclair High. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, <God. laughs> who? <laughs>
But you have to admit, those, those committees were a wonderful idea. They eliminated the face motion and freed up a lot of time to help the mother. You girls didn't think that way back then. Back then, all you girls thought about were boys and dates. That's because a boy hardly dared to call at our house. That little cheerleader did anything but nail a quarantine sign on our front door. I remember Ann running up. psychologist to come give us those examinations. We didn't know about those exams. We didn't know that maybe Anne could graduate ahead of her class. Dad's master plan. He was so anxious for Anne to graduate early so she could have more time to help her mother. <coughs> didn't Anne go to lose some boy that afternoon? Yeah, she was gone all afternoon and Dad thought she wasn't even going to make it home in time. Yeah, she missed most of the tests and dinner completely. Dad was wild. He was checking his watch every three minutes. And if that lady psychologist hadn't been there, he would have been roaring like a lion. Even I finished early. It started something. <coughs> For all I know, she eloped. She went to a movie. Mrs. Gilbert, 
I'm not getting any help in the kitchen. Well, with all these examinations, things are upset. Up to it. Partner, you better go speak to the baby. That means I have to do dishes. I'm not supposed to do dishes. That is our job. I can't find it. Lydia dishes. They were a scream at it. Who? With the woman examiner. Miss Brill. Yeah, she came late and tried to catch up. Daddy tried to be so helpful. He told us, no need to gobble your grapefruit like a pig. It'll be finished to have you. We'll wait till you're through. They all made a bad impression. <laughs> and William. <laughs> she thinks family rules apply to the guests, too. I'm sorry. I can't catch your desserts so you finish your wine with me. <laughs> and it probably didn't help when. Jackie asked if what Ms. Brill was saying was of general interest. As a matter of fact, I don't think they care for Ms. Brill. And neither do I. I don't think she's being very fair. And she's messing with my most important plan. Plan? But I thought this was just another one of school's research projects. That too. Does this have something to do with all of your trips to school? With Anne's marks, there's no reason she shouldn't graduate at the end of the semester. But she skipped a grade last year. But if she graduates, then she won't have to worry about her schoolwork for a while. And with me gone, you could use all the help you can get. She doesn't know this test will have any bearing on when she graduates, though. I talked with the superintendent. He's writing a paper on the effects of home study, and naturally, he came to the right place. Naturally. I told him he could have his Miss Brill snoop around all he wants, but in return, he has to do something for me. He's going to give Anne her diploma? If the marks are good enough. Which they better be. What is wrong with her? I believe you're talking about your daughter, Anne. There's nothing wrong with any of our children. You'll find that out when you grade their papers. And when will that be? She'll be here. Where did she go? She went to a movie. These examinations are a little more important. They're for the superintendent. I know who they're for, and they're important to me, too. The superintendent directly gives these exams. That doesn't mean I approve of anyone graduating ahead of her class. And if she doesn't show up, that's perfectly all right with me. She'll show up. What have you learned so far about the others? The results aren't conclusive. What's inconclusive about them? I have to interpret the results. Interpret? Here's something for you to interpret. What's that? You'll see. We have time to Don't think I didn't notice. Notice what? 
remember that silly part of the movie? That part all about love? I saw you kill a man. That's a lie. If anything like that happened for maybe two seconds, it was because the movie and completely involuntary. Wait, was? It was just that kind of movie. Oh. See? Having you tag along is simply unendurable. If I suppose you think it's durable to me, I'm starving to death. Kid Brothers. In case you don't know, I have six of them. Six bizarre kid brothers. I already know. Thank heaven. Hey, I thought you were getting hungry. Hungry? I made you miss dinner. I miss dinner all the time. In fact, I hate dinner. And if there's one thing I don't mind missing, it's dinner. I don't seem to be very hungry either. You do need a lot of popcorn. And gum drops. Of course, I've never messed my appetite before. Say, would you like to go to a dance? I... I mean, just depends on when the dance is. Tonight, a bunch of seniors. It just so happens to have a three. Well, I'll change and be back in half an hour. I'm glad your dad isn't old-fashioned about letting you go out on school nights. Wait, uh, Larry. School nights. Uh, before you go, I have to kind of check with somebody first. Some other guy? Well, he's male. I didn't think you were the type of girl that stands a fellow up to see if she can get a better date. No, it's not that at all. I just, I have to get through the sort of examination first. And, well, like I told you. Honestly? Honestly. But I'd rather go to the dance with you than anybody else. That's different. At it again, the minute my back is turned. <laughs> you don't have to sneak up on people. You can cough or something. Do you like coughing with peanut butter or beer now? I have to go to your home. Uh, Bill, moms, we want to worry down unimportant worries. And who said I was going to be worried again? Um, he doesn't get your father mad. He won't. He better not. <coughs> Listen, I've heard about your father. Sure. A lot of people heard from my father and his work. It wasn't exactly about his work. The way he eliminates waste motion and things like that? To tell you the truth, I was almost afraid to come here tonight. No. I didn't know whether to ask him on here or not. You haven't been listening to that little cheerleader, have you? That little Joe Scales? How'd you know? Why, he'd say anything. He would. The way he talks, he makes my father have to be some kind of monster. When actually he's... Yes. Um... Well... He's, uh, uh, friendly, yeah, and agreeable, and... So we... she's back, is she? Yeah, no reason why you shouldn't come here. Those stories you've heard, they were just absurd. Yeah. What took her so long? You know, he must be calling someone at the back of the house. Because when he's calling someone at the back of the house, it sounds like he's calling someone at the front of the house. Yeah, um... I, I guess you can. Oh, so they have bullies down there right now? Hush, Frank. I won't hush. I, I guess I'd better go along. I guess you had. Well. Oh, Larry. About the dance. What? What I mean is, will you be coming back? Bye, Jingo. Will you? I asked you to the dance tonight. Well, be seeing you. Be seeing you. Look at her! Ah, I told you boys I'd dress like the other girls. Everything would be alright and I'd be popular. Popular? Staying out late, missing dinner, and the examination? You started painting yourself too! I have not! I can see it. Perfume? You've really started wearing perfume? Frank, she hasn't even had her dinner yet. That's her fault. Perfume? Just one dab. And why not? It smells so sweet. Why not? Because it stinks up good fresh air. That's why not. Now get in there and wash it off. Oh, Dad. Do you know what a man thinks when he smells perfume on a woman? I don't know what one man thinks, and he thinks I should wash it off. Thanks. Nothing. And get in there and take that examination. She's going to eat something first. Me too. I don't want to eat anything. I want to get this examination over with. I might have something to do later. Probably something to do with that boy. Why do I need a brother tagging on everywhere I go? Really, I don't know why any boy would bother with me. You may not know, but I do. And that's why your brother goes along. Out all this time, perfume and painting? It's awful. Bill, get in there and work this for real. <laughs>
We'll tell the whole family. I have a wonderful announcement. It's about your older sister. Dad, she hasn't even finished marking my paper yet. So far as we know, your sister just finished a perfect examination. So far as we know. Yet, it looks to me as if she'll graduate at the end of the semester. Wait, what's this about graduating? Mr. Gilbert, you were instructed not to mention that. You have her examination right there. She hasn't even had the word association test. We'll give it to her. Now? Yes, now. Oh, right, but this is highly irregular. Are you ready? Um, I guess oh, yes. she's ready. All right, you know how it's done. <coughs> Answer with the word that you first associate. The first word, nice. Sad, we bleep, throw up murders about spring tree. Good heavens. You must have an IQ higher than Albert Einstein. Uh -huh. Next word, black. Film in that coot's car at me. Next, foot. Take walk around shoes, lucky dance. Next, hair. Ribbon hat, you pick a louse. Next, it's on us from perch. I didn't say the next word. I just said next. That's right. Let's see. The next word is bird. You said egg, song, nest. So that's it. You knew the next word was bird, didn't you? How did she know? You did know, didn't you? And you knew the SQ exam too, didn't you? No, it was just those words. It was some sort of joke. Yes, I see through the whole thing. You're all nasty little machine. Miss Brill. No, I I was the one who told her the words on the association test. And me. Yes, you all cheated. No, it was just me, please. You're the only one that got caught. I'll certainly report this whole thing to the superintendent. No, just about me. They didn't do anything wrong. This is that graduation talk, and I'll have some of this grade skipping all of you have been doing be thoroughly reviewed. No, just mine, please. A lot of you. Dinner, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean for this to happen. What do you mean? Gosh, I had to do a wonderful afternoon with Larry, and then, and then this had to happen. This stuff didn't start happening until boys got involved. She's growing up. Other things are important, too. Like cheating on the examination? <coughs> but Dad, you don't understand. When you're the youngest in the class, you feel like you miss out on other things, like, like sociability and leadership. Or going to a dance with a boy you like. I'll get it. Hi, Erin. Is Anne ready? Hi, Larry. <coughs> I guess I can't make it. Oh. Did it come through? No. It, it's okay. It is up to you. Well, be seen. Show something 
dad before he left. And that misunderstanding with dad, Anne really took it to heart. She felt so awkward. I think dad felt even worse. And even when we were giving him the big send-off, we were putting on a big show for him and mother. They laughed and acted as though they were so cheerful, but you could tell. Yeah, dad kept watching for Anne. It was their favorite show, too. Our imitation of him and mother. Still not by heart. I took the role of mother, and you were father. Remember? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our first guest this afternoon is Dr. Lillian Maher Gilbert. Hello, Charlotte. It's so wonderful to see all of you here. Why, Jenny, you bobbed your hair. Elizabeth, is that a new hat? You all look so wonderful. I'm not going to give a speech now, but I'll be sure to answer any questions. Now, tell us, Miss Gilbert. You really want so many children, and if so, why? Any other questions? Who really wears the pants in your household? <laughs> Any other questions? Thank you, Ms. Gilbreth, for your enlightening answers. And now for our next speaker, Mr. Frank Bunker Gilbreth. Now, now, everyone, please keep your seats. He's promised to limit his speech to only two hours, and not to mention his book, The Best Way to Do Work, more than twice in the same sentence. For the purpose of convenience, I've divided my talk into 30 main headings and 170 subheadings. I convinced with my first main Mr. Heading. Chairman, the superintendent of the factory wishes to speak with you right away. Well, I'll be right over. Wait a minute, wait a minute. When it comes to a project, you guys are right on the job. But when it comes to 
a project you guys are slow as molasses. Hey, Dad, please. I don't know. What do you say, boss? Did you say molasses? Why can't the lasses? Come on, chillin'. Yes. Me first. I like the piece. Both doors. Hey, Danielle. Don't finish. I got home in time. Oh, I've been home in time anyway. I mean, I wouldn't let anything. I bet you made me feel foolish. Uh, insisting on a review examination, forcing it on you. I don't know. It was a really hard test. All you have to do is get the foolishness out of your mind. Then I know you did what. Dad, I tried my best, but I haven't got the foolishness out of my mind. Anne. Oh, Dad. She's been studying herself sick. I just can't help it. I don't understand why you don't have any more sense. Uh, what? No. Dad, no.
talk a lot about big numbers these days, but not an awful lot of people know how much a million really is. You're going to see it every day. Every day? Do you have a million dollars, Dad? No, I have a million children instead. <laughs> Somewhere along the line, a man has to choose between the two. Here, I'll put it up later and explain what it means. Wonderful. Say, don't you like ice cream anymore? Me! <coughs> I'll come upstairs with me while I say goodbye to the babies. What toys are you going to bring back with them this time? Slide rules? Oh, we need a suggestion. Just a tired of it, my guard. It could be much worse. Huh? The motorcycle? Oh, right. Those cost money, you know. Yes, I know. Maybe our and I can pick the damage gradually. Damn. Yes. How come you run up? How come you run around college boys when you probably should be studying? I thought you were so different. I am different. You don't have to pretend to me. I'm not pretending. I don't think you ought to pretend to other people. I don't either. So you're at it again. <laughs> Shocking. <laughs> hey, sir, can I have some of the whole things You better not upset Dad. Larry, my father was leaving and all. I better see if I can help him fix him off. I'll get along. But you don't really have three fraternity pins, do you? I mean, I wouldn't think with your dad. No, I wouldn't have any time for any nonsense like that. Any nonsense? What do you mean? Sometimes a person has to push ahead with important things. What about going to senior prom with me? Wouldn't that be important? You mean, you're asking? Oh, why, Larry, I... I, I can't. My dad's going to be gone. It just wouldn't be right for me to just run off to a prom like that. No I chance at the door anymore? Oh, I'm sorry, Dad. I didn't hear it. You weren't listening. Hello, Mr. Gilbert. Say, I thought you wanted to go to a dance. I do, but... Sounds like... My daughter's just about grown up, and when a daughter grows up... Look at that. Oh, good heavens. Good afternoon. Who is it? Have a seat. I understand you're leaving, so I'll be brief. The superintendent marked it himself. Yes? It wasn't my idea to come here. About what? The examination. Well, how do you do? I'm in a hurry. I should catch a train in a few minutes. It's obvious to me she cheated again. You know that's a lie. You watched my every move. I don't claim to know how. I'm in a hurry. Did she pass? Yes. Was it a good paper? Yes. Was there anything wrong with her paper? No. Yeah, I am. And there's no more question about when she graduates? That's what I was told to tell you. She's to graduate at the end of the semester. Good job, Anne. Anne, that's swell. Now, if you'll excuse me. Wait, Miss Brill. I bet you don't even know what five plus five is. It's <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm not taking an examination. Seventeen times seventeen. Good day. It's two hundred eighty-nine. <laughs> Your sister did wonderfully. Thank you. Oh, I knew she would. So I know you have to be leaving soon, but like I was saying, it sounds like my daughter's just about grown up. She is. More than you think. And as much as I don't want to say it, when a daughter grows up, it doesn't hurt to go to a few dances. You mean I could go? Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Everyone wants to want to ever keep my I know, I, I know, I promise. know. Bill's going along right with you. It sure is something you talk about. Say, Larry, would you like to learn how to multiply two-digit numbers in your head? Yeah. Never mind, Jackie. <laughs> well, we see you. Bye, Larry. Bye, Larry. It's <laughs> <laughs> getting late. I'm going to put your back in the car. Right? What? <laughs> Bye, Jingo. I'm coming, Dad. <laughs> Eight seconds. That's really good. I have to be leaving soon. But before I leave, I have one last job. I am going to nominate your mother as chairman. All those in favor? Aye. Motion carried. She's now your new chairman. Dad, well, before you leave, there's just one thing I don't understand. <coughs> okay, I understand why you want us 
being more efficient, and moving on with things. What I don't understand is, what do you say to time for? You save time for education, for beauty, or art. You save time for mumbling pay. That's where your heart lies. That's for where your heart lies. That's what you save time for. Thank <laughs> you. 